This is the grade 8 math practice test for TN Ready. On this version of the test, it's question number 10. The graph displays a linear function. Write the equation of the linear function in the form y equals mx plus b. That's slope-intercept form, everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. Now the nature of slope-intercept form is it's just a form of the equation, which, which is just to say it looks this way. Um, we're given the slope here, which represents change. And we're giving the are given the y-intercept, which are easy to find, visually speaking. Now, um, how this works is I would substitute in values for x and get values of y. So, for instance, if it was y equals 3x plus 2, and I wanted to know, okay, so what point would that be if I'm at x of 1? So I'd put 3 times 1 plus 2. And 3 times 1 is 3, of course, plus 2 is 5. So when I substituted in a 1, I got a 5. So I have a point at 1 and 5. And on this graph, right here, there would be a dot. And then I would just substitute in 2, substitute in 0. And you can do it even smaller than that. Like, say, I substituted in 1, and then I did 1.0001, and then I did 1.0002. If I do all those things, they start to mush together, and that's where the line comes from. It's all possible inputs. Now... But what we need to know is the y-intercept and the slope. So that we don't need to change the y and the x because that would be what we would substitute in once we use it. But we have to have it before we can use it. So I'm just going to go ahead and write y equals down here. I'm going to leave a little bit of a space. Maybe draw a line, whatever. Put x there. And then I'm going to leave this after part blank because if you have a negative y-intercept, it means that you'd have a minus here as opposed to a plus. So I'm not just going to put plus there. That would seem jump in the gun. For slope, y-intercept's easy, obviously. You just go to the y-axis, and you find where it intercepts right there. Intersects that line is the intercept. So it's at zero. So you really don't have to. You could put plus zero there, but it's not really a requirement. Anytime it doesn't affect anything, we don't show it. For instance, if you have one x, you just write x because it doesn't matter. So you don't need to have anything there. Um, as for slope, there's a couple things that you need to do. Slope is a change, that's what this triangle means, in y over a change in x. Um, you probably, maybe you want to use the slope formula, which is this. I'm not going to bother with that here. I'm just showing it to you. But really, it's how it changes going up and down as it goes along. It just gives us a point of reference to say what it's doing. So I'm just going to pick a couple points here. Uh, right there seems fine, and there's another one. I usually pick a point that it crosses uh, one of these little mini gr these grid lines here. It makes it easier to see. First things first, it's going down left to right. So as I move this way, it's going down, so my slope's going to be negative. Don't get the number and forget to put the plus. So the first thing you should do is identify whether it's negative or positive first, then work from there. Then we're going to change in y, so I'm just going to sort of grid out this thing. Makes like a triangle. Uh, you don't have to use the Pythagorean theorem. I'm not trying to find distance. I'm just trying to find out how much it changes. 1, 2. So this is 2. The change in y value is 2. And then I have 1, 2, 3 there. 2 thirds. And again, it's going down, so this is technically a negative 2. So you get negative 2 thirds. I tend to put that first and don't put it here, but if you think you can remember, fine. Just make it negative 2 up here and then bring it down, whatever works for you. Um, do you need the plus 0? Again, we talked about that. The answer to that question is thankfully no. Um, might be helpful in some situations, but not really required here. So y equals negative 2 thirds x. Now we can use this to find any point on the graph. So say we wanted to do, which is a good use of your time, by the way. Um, if I wanted to find out what where it should be at 4, for instance, or maybe here, that's a pretty good spot. So this is where x is equal to 6. So I'm just going to test. Negative 12 over 3 gives me negative 4. So I substitute in a value of 6, I should get negative 4, and I do. So I know it matches. It's just a good way to test it as you leave out the other side of it.